soils naturally store carbon, like a lot of it. Surprisingly, the Earth's soil contains four times more carbon than the total stored in all living plants and animals, including those forests we just talked about. There are more than 250 million acres of farmland in the US. That's the size of Texas and California combined. But agricultural soils are running a big carbon deficit due to their intensive use. Because of how much farmland there is, even small improvements in farming practices that increase the carbon per acre on farms are hugely impactful. Building soil carbon is even good for farmers and ranchers since it increases soil health and crop yields. Planting cover crops, those are the crops that cover the ground when fields would otherwise be bare during off seasons or off years, can extend photosynthesis throughout the year. And using compost can improve yields while storing compost carbon content in the soil. Scientists are even working to breed crops with deeper roots, making them more resistant to drought while depositing more carbon into the soil. Direct air capture. This is probably what most people think of when talking about removing CO2 from the air. Direct air capture is the process of chemically scrubbing carbon dioxide directly from the ambient air, and again, storing it either underground or in long-lived products like concrete. This new technology is not unlike the carbon capture and storage technology employed today at power plants and industrial facilities. It's relatively straightforward to measure and account for the climate benefits of direct air capture, and its potential scale is enormous. But the technology remains costly and energy intensive, but as the energy and technology costs go down, and more energy is produced by renewable sources, direct air capture has the potential to take back billions of tons of emissions annually. Oceans are actually the largest carbon sink on Earth. While the oceans represent a great potential to reduce emissions, when they absorb CO2, it increases the acidity of the seawater. And increasing the acidity of the oceans has its own effects, like destroying coral reefs and delicate ecosystems. But scientists are looking into ways to scrub CO2 out of the oceans, like we scrub CO2 out of the air. By reducing CO2 concentration in the ocean, the water then draws in more carbon from the air to regain balance. And seawater has a much higher density of CO2 compared to ambient air, which means less work is required to separate it out than in direct air capture. But seawater is also considerably heavier than air, which means more work to move it through any processing facility. The US Navy has already developed a prototype seawater capture device. Because CO2 can be converted to fuel by adding energy, this technology can allow vessels to create their own fuel at sea. Of course, if the captured carbon is converted to fuel and combusted, it just returns to the atmosphere. But this still reduces the need to add new emissions by burning fossil fuels, and future applications of this technology could provide long-term storage for captured carbon.